Hey everybody, welcome to Swag Vintage AZ. Thanks for being here with me. We're gonna go thrifting in this video. We're gonna do some what's sold, just a reminder. We are on Etsy. We are also on Instagram. And if you happen to be in the Phoenix, Arizona area, we'd love it if you would swing by the Brass Armadillo Antique Mall in Phoenix, located at I-17 and Cactus Road, and we are Booth P2 in the parlor. All right, let's get started. I guess that day we started with art. And just to note, the video editing here was done by a little friend of mine who was with me. So it might be a little wild and crazy, but I think they did a pretty good job. Nothing in art went to the glass section and it was pretty well picked over this day. This was a Goodwill location in Scottsdale, Arizona, kind of the old town Scottsdale area. It's one of my favorites because you get some really good mid-century items. They have some really great 1950s tracked home neighborhoods in that area. But today was not our day as far as dishware or glassware. I did pick up this piece of signed studio pottery. Sadly, it didn't have a tag on it. So I can't remember if this made the final cut or not, but it was a nice piece, good color, kind of a stoneware vibe with some blue splatters. There was a dip bowl in pink that I think is vintage, but I left that one behind. I think the price was too high. I loved this dishware design with the beautiful flowers. But again, when it comes to dishware, it's just not a hot seller for me, so I left that. Here was a Fire King piece with a nice little side detail, though I left that as well. And moving right along into the plates, I don't believe I saw much. Maybe there was one more design that I liked. Oh my gosh, my mother had that design when I, in the 90s on the top there. Oh, here I am looking. I thought these might be Mikasa, um, the style that Laura Caldwell likes to collect, but they weren't, they were really lightweight. And then these were fabulous, this mid-century pattern. I'm kind of regretting I didn't at least pick these up and put them in the booth because they're so clearly kind of the atomic kitchen era, though I think they were kind of pricey just for the three, so I left them. And into like the jars, I'm always looking for some additions to my propagating station. That one was $4.50, so I left it, though it, it was pretty, so maybe I should have picked that up. And just taking a view of all the shelves, Nothing super exciting here. Kind of wish I picked up that sort of pink vase. It has an interesting shape, but I did not pick it up. So these all look like mm, just contemporary generic store pieces. Found this pewter candlestick holder. Looks like it was signed or marked. And there were two of them, but again, the price being too high for both of them. Now, here's the big score. Someone had just come out on, with a cart and put these on the shelf right in front of me. They were each $5.50. These are brass, authentic. Uh, speaking of brass, those were candlesticks, super heavy. This is this huge platter in etched brass. So pretty. It was $7.50, so I was kind of like, uh, I don't know, should I, shouldn't I? And I ended up getting it because it was just so, so pretty. And I'll be showing you some pictures of that later staged. I thought this was a great score, new in box, though it was $17.50, which was a little bit steep. I would have had to run some comps. So I don't know, here, am I being an immoral person? Because it was taped shut and I didn't feel right calling it new in box if I hadn't inspected the items. And I also didn't feel right paying $7, $17.50 for it if I didn't know, because it could just be shattered inside. I mean, I didn't hear any glass clinking inside. So I got my keys and I went ahead and opened it up. I don't know, maybe um, I broke some like 
thrifting rules here, but I really just needed to inspect all of the items. Now, I did not know that these were anchor, anchor hawking. Um, I have picked up pieces in this pattern before. This was the clear glass pattern and it has wine glasses and a decanter. I've also sold that decanter before. And as I was looking, sure enough, there was a big crack in the foot of the first one that I picked up. So back it went, sadly, but now I know uh, at least the name of this Wexford Anchor Hawking brand that I've sold before. These were pretty, uh, just a nice flute there, and I went ahead and set them together. They look like silver. And then on this shelf of just random ceramic bric-a-brac, thought this fish was funny, flipped it over, and it had a Made in China sticker, so we left that one behind, but it was cute. Then moving into the back, this was a really pretty hand-painted piece probably made in Mexico with a lid. I think it had a crack running along the bottom, so I had to leave that one. Kind of love this piece. A nice, night. I think it's dated 1977. Cool Arizona commemorative plate. But we have plenty of those in the booth, so I left it. And here is an owl bookend. I mean, I'll pick up anything with an owl on it. They are really good sellers for me and also I have a family member who loves owls because they might be reading some books that feature some magical owls etc so we ended up keeping that one this piece I looked up and it's an Ikea decoration and I think it's kind of a take on that Swedish horse but we left it behind because there wasn't a ton of resale value there that was an interesting jar but I really had my eye on this and that is a true like marble onyx stone alabaster I don't um, I don't know for sure but a nice kind of white pink rose quartz color for five dollars and fifty cents with the silver arms and neck and mouth very pretty urn shaped vase so I went ahead and picked that one up into my little carry bas carry on basket and as we're moving along let's see what else we get here into some glassware now I have scored glassware at this particular Goodwill before but that was not the day so we finally gave in and got a proper cart and here I am unloading the little basket I think I found that there's a little bit of a gap between the stone and the bottom silver foot of that so that one's going to end up in the booth that vase but then these brass candlesticks they're going to go in a collection as I gather smaller ones uh, those will be like the centerpieces because they are like heavy and really really great quality okay heading over into clocks this was a nice looking 80s piece but it was incomplete so we left that one behind but I did like the clock face on it I don't think I would have picked it up ultimately even if it had been complete Okay, so here we found, I just keep finding these shell pieces. It's not a puka shell. It is a like cowrie shell. And special thanks to a commenter for educating me. But I liked this little wall hanging. I thought it was pretty, so I picked that one up. Okay, back to glassware, let's take a look. These, this little amber piece was cute, looked vintage. There was a clear glass piece next to it, though it was rather plain and restrained. So I went ahead and left those. Um, they would have been fine for the booth, but we have plenty of glassware in the booth right now. So didn't need to stretch for those that day. This looked like an interesting flute. I uh, just kind of picked it up out of curiosity. What's back here? Um, Stand Up Live, that's a local club. My partner just sold a complete set of these out of our booth, though there was only one, so I didn't end up getting it. And then this Pepsi cup was clearly losing its color value, so that one was left behind. This one, however, I did pick up. It could be contemporary, but it has such a great 70s or Southwest or both vibe. So I went ahead and grabbed that and put it in the cart. I ended up putting the green one back just because as a one-off I didn't think it would be anything worth picking up or 
a big money maker in the booth. It would probably sit a while as a single. Then moving along, these are Ikea. I used to have those in like a milk glass white, not milk glass, but just ceramic white. That was like when I was first dating my husband, we had those cups. So here I am making the final choice. Let's put that green one back and we will keep this cute little zigzag brown, orange, and white pattern. Into the mugs, I loved this. It's so beautiful. It had this kind of raw textured, it kind of looks like a prickly pear, and then heartbreaker, that handle was just shredded. So this thing was loved. Someone repaired it many times, but as far as resale goes, I just can't sell something with that much of repair work on it. Moving into it, just looking and looking, seeing if anything else might catch my eye bicycle. <laughs> I think I see something away at the tippy top and this was a winner for us. I actually ended up keeping this at home as like a soup mug. Clearly it's vintage. It has that signature kind of brown painted handle. I really liked the colors and the geometric design with the lines on it so we brought that one home. Here in the furniture section, I saw this amazing basket, woven basket with the lid. However, you can see some of it along the edges. It's just so chewed up. And I think it was a really expensive price. So, well, $17.50 would have been reasonable had it been in good condition, but it wasn't, so I had to leave it. This thing, oh my gosh, 30 smackers. I could not justify it, but what a bag, so cool. Looks like it was, you know, hand cut and pieced together with these really vibrant Kachina figurines on each side. A really cool purse, but at $30, I would have to sell it for much more than that. And I'm not confident that it would have sold at a much higher price. So we left that one sadly, but I did find a nice designer handbag that was contemporary, but I really liked the material and the look of it. And just continuing to look in these bags, I found another vintage handbag, which I thought had really nice lines on it, black and gold tone. You really can't go wrong. Had a little bit of damage there. So this will go in the booth so that a customer can inspect it themselves and make sure that like that as is damage is acceptable to them. So that one is currently in the booth. It also had a few scratches on the back. So an imperfect piece, but I still think it has a lot of great style and potential for, you know, a wedding. It makes a great cross bag too with that long hand, uh, handle strap, handle strap. What's wrong with me? I can't think of the word. You know what I mean? looking even more. This one looked somewhat interesting. I liked the shape. I liked the metal on the outside. However, it was squished in a bad way and I couldn't pop that back in so that it would stay. And it looked really contemporary, probably made out of faux everything. So I decided to put that one back. What else can I find here? Mm, this one faked me out to be vintage at first, but then was clearly made new. And continuing to look, but not really seeing anything else. Though, getting two purses out of a shopping trip worked pretty well, I think. So here we are. This is the final look. This one did not have a tag, as I said, so I think I put it back because I just, the line was long, I didn't want to hold everything up, and I'm just kind of a shy person, and so I don't like taking up a lot of space in the world, so I couldn't justify it. But a quick swing by the lamps, and I saw this beauty in glass and brass. Oh, it's the wrong way. However, I left it because we do have some right. similar lamps for sale at the booth right now. Here I am picking it up again because oh, I just can't resist it because I think it's so pretty with that pearlized glass. The brass I would have preferred to be more shiny, not brushed, but ultimately it wasn't a lamp day. So this one went back, but we can look at it and admire it as I obviously did. I think I was agonizing quite a bit. Oh, nice cutouts at the top too. See, now I want it. It's gone, it's gone, let it go. I have so many lamps. 
just let it go. So here I thought, oh, this might be a good desk lamp. And then I noticed it would be great for use in the videos that I make, especially I wish I had had this when I did all of those restorations in my last video. So I went ahead and picked that up. I think it was $6. So pretty, I hope, hopefully that's like better than what you can spend online for an item like that. Okay, so now here's the actual final haul. Not a bad day. I think that we did pretty well. Okay, what's sold? Using inventory shelf. And the thing that sold are two candlesticks that are in kind of a Spanish revival style. Okay, they're behind this clock. these two which are so super cool and they actually match this other wall candelabra that I have for sale so but these ones sold this one's still available so that is that and then the other thing is in the living room and here are those candlestick holders staged I could have cleaned those candles those ball those round candles they look terrible but anyway it was enough to sell it right they were really really cool and they looked great staged so the other thing that sold was this platter it sold within I think six hours of me posting it online and just a note there is usually a lag between my YouTube videos and my inventory so the best way to stay with me on my new things posted online is going to be through our Instagram account. That said, if you see anything in any of my videos that you would like to know more about, shoot me a message over Instagram and I'll let you know what the status is. These also sold, this was a collection from that big box of brass that I bought and I have a video of the unboxing. I grouped all of the smaller vases together and sold them as a lot. Similarly, this was actually collected over time, all of these smaller candlesticks, and I'm working on my next collection that will include those big ones that I picked up in this video, but these sold. And then this brass cowboy boot with the spur that spins sold. And I think I got like $60 for this one. So that was a really good sale for me. And again, this came from that box of brass that uh, is in my videos as well. And so did this brass bell, which I loved this one. It was kind of a Victorian style and you could click the little hinge on the side to make it ding really really pretty it's so just a reminder we are swag vintage az that's it for today and thank you so much for being with us our links are in our description bye everybody